<laughs> a little bit shallow and rocky in there. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it might get washed up onto the rocks. <laughs> Let's go around the back and see if we can attack it from the other end. Nah, no, go this way. <laughs> You're going to do it? Yeah. Do it. <laughs> don't oh, beat wow. us, don't beat us. Just, 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 just. <laughs> Through the gap. Welcome to Sopramar Boatyard in Lagos, where we are looking forward to cleaning Farrell. Yeah, along with the other long list of boat jobs that need to be done every time you lift, we're going to try and get everything done in advance of our Atlantic crossing, so try and take everything off. So we will probably be here for many, many years. <laughs> I hope you like the film. Coming up, sailing along the Algarve coast, anchoring in the lagoons. Taking a closer look at the coastline by kayak and lifting out in Lagos, preparing for the Atlantic crossing. Portomeo Anchorage is a place where people stay for months, really, years even. It's safe, protected, and if you want a trip ashore, there is plenty to see. So we're out for an explore, nice little anchorage, got a castle, got some beaches. We to have a nice little town as well just around the corner. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We can tie up the dinghy on the quayside, I think. Yeah, big wall there. Uh, got to watch out a little bit here. There are still some, some tides. I think we're coming out to high tide, so uh, yeah, leave a bit of slack in the line and <laughs> yeah. stick on there. We're going to have a little, little look around, do a bit of shopping. Yes, we ran out of eggs, as you do. You never have enough, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a breeze today, so I'm very happy. Yeah. Nice and cool, in boat anyway. Veraguda is a fishing village. Fresh fish are caught every day and there's plenty of room to leave the dinghy and go for a walk. So that's the plan. First, looking at the picturesque homes with climbing plants to give some essential shade. All built into the hillside. Well, it's nice to have a nice day off and a, <laughs> and a wander, isn't it? This is a pretty little place, isn't it's it? It's very pretty. <laughs> slippery. Oh, streets, they're a bit slippery, yeah. <laughs> Isn't the church up here? Yes, church. Oh, there we are. Oh, yes. There's a church, and then you have to go along the front to get to the castle, I think, so we can do that as well. But yeah, let's get out shopping, have a wander, go and explore the beach. Pretty little hidden houses they've got. As always, as we've found in the med, in prime position at the top of the village is the church. In this instance, it's closed and only open on special occasions. So we make our way down to the other side of Ferraguda, through more streets of chocolate box houses, finally ending up in the main square, which is full of restaurants. This is a place tourists can come to visit, and you can eat pretty much anything you like. From local foods to different types of curry, all served with ice cream and cocktails. And yes, there's always someone who parks their dinghy at high tide without a slack line. And, well, it's hanging in there. <laughs> so Judy's managed to drag me away from the Indian restaurants in the, in the town. Because <laughs> I promised her dinner on the beach. That's yeah, it's we're supposed do. to be a really lovely restaurant. It is. Just up there, I think. So we're going there instead. And just in case, we're putting the dinghy above the waterline. That's it, just to the high tide bit. I think we'll be that long. Oh, lovely. Good job we got a light one. This is very nice, isn't it? Nice sort of beach. Yeah, it's lovely. Lovely evening as well. A think... little bit breezy for the uh, trip home. But look, <laughs> a garden restaurant. That's the one we're supposed to go to, I think. Oh, 
it's definitely a place for burgers. It is. Burgers, Aperol and a goat's cheese wrap. Yum, definitely beach food. Back to the boat and we're planning the next stage of our journey. This is a coastline full of little inlets and rivers, just like the one we're in now. All are tidal and some are quite small and shallow. A case in point is our next destination, Alvor. It'll take about three hours to get here and we'll anchor just inside the entrance to the river in the one spot that can take our two metre draft. If we take a closer look at the map, here's the place, a hole with a depth of 3.6 metres. That's the one we're going for. So we're coming into Alvor and it is high tide. It is, you can only really get in at high tide. We've got three metres under us. We've got about three metres of tide here. Um, but you can just about get in and sort of, there's a gap in the entrance. It's a little bit deeper, just on the starboard side here. It's a little bit on the port side as well. But yeah, we've been there before, so we know we can do it. What we can't do uh, is sort of get down the river to where the town is, which is what you know the shallower draft boats do. But we'll do that in the kayak, that'd be fun. And then we come out, high tide again, yeah? Yep, we'll have to wait for some high tide, yeah. And in between? <laughs> <laughs> in between we're fine. We've got a little bit of deeper water in here, which is where I'm, at, where I'm aiming. So hopefully if it's still there, nothing shifted. Should be fine. Yeah, we've got five meters under us in this bit. This is the deepest bit. So okay. I'll just creep out over just outside the channel and uh, we'll be fine. Okay, I trust you, Captain. <laughs> it's funny though, isn't it? Because you look at it and you just say, oh, massive expanse of water, you can go anywhere. And you really can't. Luckily for us, we are the only boat here and we hit the spot. So well, that's it. Didn't put a lot of chain out. It's not going to be any wind in here. A little bit of tide to just swing you around. So we've got enough swinging room, but really there's not a lot of space in here. I mean, it is really weird that you look out and you have this expanse of water, but it'll look very different to this in a, in a couple of hours. This will all be mud. You can see all the shallow draft boats, mainly catamarans, are anchor there. Our boars up on the hill. Uh, but yeah, there's no way for us to, to get there uh, with a two metre draft. So we get the canoe out and uh, do it. That'd be a, a lovely trip for tomorrow, I think. So we've got the tide going our way. Probably get there without even rowing. <laughs> might, <You> might. <laughs> <laughs> might just sit here and, uh, and enjoy it. She won't know I'm not rowing. But we can go across the still, can't we, you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be shallow in there, but we need you know, several inches, that's all. It's a rising tide. I think we can go direct across what was completely sand only about half an hour ago. Normally you'd go all the way around there. But not with our boat. There's a lot of boats in that anchorage though. Yeah. Well, it's a lovely place to spend a day, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what you were doing there. <laughs> Get a picture with you in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're off course now. I am. I don't want to drip on the camera. <laughs> land us on the island. No, that's not a big enough island. Oh, and a land on the island. There's no palm tree. <laughs> Who wants to go there with no palm tree? <laughs> Steve does apparently. My own island. I think we need to name it. Build a, build a villa just here. Gardens. To do it quick though, I think I've got about 10 minutes until the tide takes it away. Yeah, the tide's come up even in the last two minutes <laughs> that you've been there. Are you getting in or I'm going to leave you? <laughs> I'm having lunch. <laughs> and the island just gets smaller. Actually, I could probably walk across to there. <laughs> I don't think it's that deep. It's a long way, but I don't think it's that deep. <laughs> Closer to the town, it's getting a bit busier, but we are finding a parking place just below the promenade where there is some very clever steel artwork. 
I like it. There's a couple of streets of tourist shops and restaurants in Alvor, and I recommend the local squid, cooked Portuguese style. Lovely, little squids. Yep, Algarve style. Let's take something out. Yeah, it's the sort of backbone bit. It looks like a bit of plastic, but it's not, that's it. Is that it? In the morning, we take the next step along the coast to Lagoche. First, just look at the weather. We got sunbathing ten minutes ago. I know, so sudden. Just whoosh. <laughs> well, it looked a bit dark, didn't it, for a bit, and then yeah. that was that. A bit of warning and no wind, so I got the motor on again. Yeah, we're nearly there. Oh well. <laughs> it is just a 30 minute trip, and then we're heading for Marina de la Gauche. We've been here before, and it is a lovely place. An easy check in at the marina, where you can also check into the country if necessary. Customs and immigration under one roof. We just came and checked in at the marina office, which is just over there. And they've got customs in there as well, very efficient, stamp your passports. And they told us that Schengen doesn't matter now in Portugal until the end of the year, we can stay. Doesn't matter how many days you've used. Where did that come from? <laughs> very strange. I mean, that's obviously uh, Madeira as well, because that's Portuguese. So don't have to bother counting days at all now. And now a few days to enjoy one of the busiest and friendliest marinas we've ever been in. And it's not just the great restaurants wide main pontoons, as well as good finger pontoons. You can see that people come and they stay, like our friend and patron, Redmond. So Redmond, you sort of set yourself up here, because I know <laughs> you've got a boat in the water here, well, you've, got, <laughs> you've got a boat on the hard, you've got an apartment. What, what's, the, what's the attraction of Lagoche? Because I know a lot of people well, come and they stay. Lagoche is unique. Um, when I meet guys and they smile and They've come in here and they've been here three months, six months, a year. I say, another day in paradise. Yeah. <laughs> and my friend Roy, who came down with me on the rally, said, if you came down from the moon and landed on Earth, this is where you'd want to land. Yeah. There's a fabulous tennis club. The beaches are wonderful. The Portuguese will do anything for you. They're wonderful people. They make you very welcome. Um, here you've got Marina. Walking distance of the town, yeah. it's rather unique. Yeah. Often they're remote. Um, it ticks all the boxes. Let's so let's, do it let's, have, let's have a little <laughs> look at this Hylus then, because I mean I've been on a high, obviously several Hylus's before. We actually had a little bit of a tour around one uh, last year in Annapolis, and it, I've got to say, one of my favourite ever boats. When she hits the waves, she doesn't ride up. Yeah. She rise up gently but cuts through yeah as you can see she's quite fine isn't she, she in the bows quite it's quite very it's very yeah. sleek that yeah slightly wetter than some other boats yeah. but um she doesn't stop yeah <laughs> and you don't want a boat that keeps stopping and then having to pick up speed particularly yeah. Yeah. offshore yeah um can we can have a little look yeah you got, got the same hatches as us actually yes these uh a lot of the quality boats, and I know your boat is what I call a quality boat, you do find the same fittings. <clears throat> you've got to be, you've got to dodge around, but it's something to yeah. hold on to, isn't it? That's a good thing. That's right. About um, these sorts of decks, people think, I mean, the Halbergs are the same. They sort of come in and they sort of seem to be in the way, but, but it's something it's some, to hang on to. Yeah, seat. you learn to do a little um, yeah, yeah. walk <laughs> through there. <laughs> a little jig. And this obviously is uh, a staysail. Yeah. And Redmond's boats had an interesting adaptation yeah. to the foresails. And can you ever use it sort of like a solar wing and go out with it butterfly? Yes, you can. Once, Absolutely. Yeah, you can yeah. go out there yeah. with those two. Obviously, yeah. spin a capole on one. Yeah. And the other one you can feed through to a block on the end of the boom. Yeah. But not enough gap to get them through, though. But through there, yes, you've got to furl up. Yeah. <coughs> Having this gap, I think, is a good thing because if you do suffer uh, a sudden increase in wind, mm. uh, it's got an escape route. Yeah. Yeah, I love the layout of these boats there. They are very nice. Oh, look, this, this is a good idea. Where'd you, where'd you get that idea from? The... 
Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. Someone uh, on YouTube. <laughs> I do listen. Yes, and, this is uh, one and, of and our five react. best things from about two years ago. I think yes. they, are, they are very good. Now this, this, I think Kraken have nicked this idea because they've got they've got this now on their new version of the uh, forty, the fifty. Um, just because it's in front, it used to be in front of the engine room, and now you can slide it in. But, oh, I see. But it's a good idea, isn't it? Having it a, is. Yeah, a seat thing. yeah, it just gives you that bit of flexibility. Slide out of the way and store stuff in as well. So yeah, this is what I like, this flow, because you can sort of go from the, the yes. galley round either way. So, Each... Yeah, some of these models, particularly the Americans, they tend to like um, bringing this right the way across here and blocking it off oh, and yeah. putting a computer facility yeah, yeah, yeah. in, which yeah. is all well and good. But when you're living on it, and we've lived on this quite a bit lately, yeah. um, you know, someone's cooking or they're there making a cup of tea or getting a beer, um, if you want to get into the back, into the stern, um, you go the other way. Yeah, and it, and that's very true at sea. Yeah, because if you think about it, that head is in the best position to use at sea, whereas yeah. the other head is up the bow. Yeah, and yeah. you'd have to go all the way down here through the cabin and into the head. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if it's rough, you don't really want to be yeah. spending and a lot of time. And you've still got a, you know a decent nav desk in in here, so you know you don't you don't need to. To block that off because I've always liked the idea of the engine room. We've got a big engine room, but yes. I don't think our layout is as, is as nice as this boat because of the engine room. And Kraken have gone for the same thing, they want the engine room. But it was actually after seeing this boat last year where I thought, yeah, this, this works really well. But is it still good for getting for the engine? You've got enough, you can sort of get to it from every. <clears throat> Every angle it looks like. Well, you know, we talk the same language. All boats are always going to be a compromise. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm an engineer. Yeah, of course I'd love an engine room. You can climb in there and shut the door and play to your heart's content. Yeah, yeah. But it does take space. Yeah. So here, I think this is a good compromise. The key to this is having the island counter open directly to the engine, which it does on all sides. The, the alternator and stuff this side. Doors on both sides plus yes. the companionway steps all come away. So the engine is right there. Some, like the Oyster that we also looked at last year in Annapolis, have you reaching through cupboards. This doesn't work nearly as well. When you want to work on it, see so all, yeah. all, all these. You can just pull the doors out and come, off. Come yeah, same, and off. same as the ones on our uh, engine room. But yeah, I mean, that is great, isn't it? Because you know you can't just sort of sit down here and you can still get to everything yes. quite nicely. Because as with the engine room, it does seem like you know, sometimes you look at it and you think, oh, it's loads of space, but some of it around the other side by the wall, you've got That's to right. squash yourself in there. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, you can get, you know, it's not, it's not actually as, as easy in lots of ways as this one is. It's always nice to nose around people's boats, but we have some exploring to do. Lagos has a wonderful beach to the east, but also right on the doorstep is this incredible rocky promontory. It's quite a nice little harbour and a little fort. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I guess you needed one back in the day, I yeah. thought. <laughs> Falls everywhere, but it's just really nice. A little drawbridge, self-contained thing, isn't it? It's amazing. And for protection, the obligatory moat. Sometimes with and sometimes without water. Yeah, no moat at the moment, low tide. See all the kayakers coming through. But yeah, Steve's not got to negotiate this now. Woo! Okay. Little beach though, isn't it? Beautiful. I thought that jump looked quite scary, but it doesn't look scary when you do it. <laughs> and there's some more people doing it. And look, they're out on the paddle boards. the boardwalk view at the top and then it goes all the way around here all the way to loose which is about five six k i think well not quite all the way it turns out because they are still building it but already all the way to the lighthouse on the top of the cliff well, the beach gets wider and bigger as you come around the other side of the lighthouse they haven't got the boardwalk anymore though no, that stopped, but the walk is it's quite good. I mean, it's it's a solid path along the coastline. And what a coastline. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's just amazing. <laughs> just lovely. It 
was so lovely we decided to see the coastline and the caves from the water as well. We start out around 8am so we can have the place to ourselves. All quiet in the marina as the bridge doesn't open until 9. And this is where we come to. What a place. Caves and tunnels caused by limestone buildup around 20 million years ago. Layers of sandstone and darker volcanic ash. Perfect place to launch the Swell Pro and get some aerial shots. So we're tagging along behind the uh, one of the tours now and getting all the info. What was it they called this one, this rock in front? Uh, this one's called the Titanic and the Iceberg. And from this angle, I can see that. From back there, <laughs> I didn't get it at all. Oh yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> it's a big iceberg. I don't think the iceberg was that big. It's twice the size of the ship. Well, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> There's one bird standing majestically at the top, but this whole coastline is full of these rocks just protruding from the sea with caves underneath them. We've got loads more people coming now. We started off early thinking we'd have a little bit of time to ourselves, but wow, this is such a popular coastline at this time of year. Okay, time to stop playing. We have serious work to do. As well as the marina, Lagosh has an excellent boatyard, Sopramar, just around the corner. It's been recommended to us by many people, so we're getting our jobs done ready for the Atlantic crossing here, rather than in the Canaries. It's a stressful time, but the guys here take good care. We're pleased to see a very effective jet wash. They even have a special rotating attachment for the troublesome areas. Blast those barnacles. An extra line low down tying the strops together before we move. And then we trundle through the boatyard. We're going to, what should we call it? A care cradle, pamper palace. All I know is it's going to be hard work for us but I love these one-piece cradles. At least we know we're 100% safe. So that's the stressful bit over. She's there. <laughs> She's up. Yeah. 
And it looks, I mean, I think this is probably the best the, the bottom's ever looked, isn't it? Absolutely, it yeah. Out. No, I mean, you can, all, just a few bits to scrape off, and yeah. then you can just start painting. Yeah, it's the usual bits where it's sort of peeled back, so yeah. it just needs a bit of filler in there. But this, it's incredible. That's the CJet 33, which I've always used and swear by it. It's just always been good, no matter where we've been. Look at this, I've got a bigger zinc for this this time, our main zinc. Yeah, it's pretty well gone, isn't it? Look yeah. at the state of that. That's, yeah. that's not, not much left of that. Actually, probably worse than the underneath. Yeah, yeah, the hard anti foul. That didn't really work so well. Well, it's okay. At least it's still red. I mean, last time, that's if you true. remember, most yeah. of it had worn off. I it mean, had, I put yeah. we put two good thick coats on it this time, so so that's better. That special jet wash that they had to do the uh, the prop, and they did this <laughs> with it is impressive. They put a different head on. And uh, yeah, it's come up very clean, all that. Never get much uh, wear on these anodes there, which I don't know, I mean, you know, it's not a good sign if you get nothing, because it probably means they're not working, but I've always checked the connection and it, and it looks good. Got the usual bits where the straps went that we're gonna have to clean up. And a few of our through holes have got some good growth. I noticed the one down the end here, when I was washing yeah. the decks yesterday, the cockpit, drain wasn't working very well uh, this side's not too bad but the other side is full where is it it's uh this one full of barnacles it's got tiny oh, little yeah. tiny little back ones up there have to get those out <laughs> yeah first job and the prop they did a good job with that high pressure one as well taking we had this uh silicon yeah. stuff on there last time which was dreadful it just fell off it was rubbish straight away it fell off within and i don't know within about the first few weeks didn't it really it did yeah so either we find some velox which i haven't seen here on sale yet which is the only one that i trust or we buff it up to a absolutely lovely shiny shiny finish yep and just leave it leave it like that i can do that <laughs> Yes, lots to do, but I was really pleased actually at how well Farewell looked after that spray mm. because the anti foul has held quite well, I thought. Yeah, it's usually the case with Farewell. Under the waterline, normally absolutely fine, big spray down, not much to do, just recoat. Yeah. But the top sides, top sides have always been an issue. Regular viewers will know over the years, tried all sorts of things because the dark, you know, the dark gel coat just goes chalky and once it's done that, really difficult to sort of get it through. But we are going to try because there's a really good paint shop here really yeah we're painting. not painting but we're not painting because that's really expensive <laughs> it, we looked into that but the guys Oops. from there have come through and uh, and showed us a really good way really good method of cutting back with some special equipment so yeah have a look next episode for that because hopefully yeah. i mean it's going to be a lot of work but that will save our joko i hope a lot of work and a lot of, lot of stress on your back i think as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> as yeah well it's going to be knackered but I'm going to do it over the course of two lots because we've yeah. got a gap in the middle, which is always a good thing if you're lifting your boat. Try and do, you know, have a break and then come back refreshed. So that's so what we're doing. So we are getting on a train, mm. then an aeroplane, then another aeroplane, <laughs> and then another train, and we're going to refreshing. Annapolis. It'll be fine. It'll be lovely. They're going to Annapolis. Once we get there. So we will be in the YouTube tent, and we have the timetable of when we'll be there down below. So anyone who comes to Annapolis, do drop in and say mm. hello. There'll yeah. be other YouTube channels there as well. So the yeah. tent will be full. We <laughs> we'll be wandering around, so just stop us if you see us. Yeah. And, uh, and for Patrons, we're going to have a Patron meetup every night in a pub, uh, which I'm going to try and find. I'll find a good <laughs> pub and uh, you know, tell the Patrons where to where to come and meet us. And we'll try and have one on a friend's boat as well. We're, yeah, we've got lots, lots of. We're just going to chill out actually this time at yeah, Netflix, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Meanwhile, talk about chilling out. If we do get some time here mm. where we want to just chill, the the beach is just behind us there, just behind the boardwalk, yeah, which goes all the way along this side as well as the other side which is the walk that we did um, and also the town of course and yeah. the marina just over there yeah it's so, great marina as you saw got loads of restaurants but the town as well yeah beautiful it's really nice and those boardwalks around here so yeah we are going to try and just sort of finish at five o'clock and and enjoy yeah. the evening i think every time and yeah and or collapse we don't, i mean we don't run out of time. <laughs> that's the other thing i think usually you just sort of say take the overalls off yeah. and just fall into Best bed laid so we'll try not to do that all the time mm. anyway so thank you very much to our patrons i hope to see some of you in annapolis thank you very much to our subscribers and thank you for watching thanks for watching